everybody, and welcome to Local Chat. I'm talking over the music while it's playing. You know what? I got the first mistake out, folks. I got the first mistake out. It's going to be perfect. This is when I was supposed to talk. That's the intro music, folks. Thank you guys for watching Local Chat, and thank you for joining us. David from Save Data, how's it going? I'm doing well. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, Jake from Subpixel, scale of 1 to 11, how was your 9-11? <laughs> well, we, well, I mean, I wasn't keeping I wasn't keeping track live. I don't know if, if Joe Biden oh, did 9-11. I, gotta do I, wasn't keeping, I wasn't keeping a close eye on his schedule. That was day, such a good so. clip. Oh, I, I appreciate it. I, I gotta appreciate it. I gotta, I gotta do nine eleven shit real quick. Oh boy! Speaking Jeff of doing nine eleven, melt steel beams with Joe Biden can apparently. Yeah, yeah. I am glad that it's 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 been happening for several years now, but it feels like definitely this year, maybe even last year, we have officially reached the point where it is okay to make nine eleven jokes in public. Like it's it's now mainstream, and I'm so excited about that because. I, I'm not it's not like I was doing it in 2002 or anything, but I was pretty early being like, we can make jokes about this, right? Uh, so I'm glad we can all do this together. It's 9-11 um, 2003. Young Ian's looking around side to side like, is it yeah. too soon? Is it is well, it too soon? Can I? <laughs> do you know? Do you know about Gilbert Gottfried and why he lost the Aflac duck gig? I feel like at some point I knew this, but I don't remember. It's because it's because literally like two, three weeks after 9-11, he did a dinner in New York and he was like, I almost didn't make it. My flight to the Chrysler building was late. <laughs> and Affleck was like, nope. Like he was, he was way early, way too early, Gilbert. Um, anyways, speaking of momentous occasions, David, how was PAX West? Do they still call it PAX Prime? No, it's, it's PAX officially Prime. PAX West now. Uh, they yeah. didn't want people going to like PAX Unplugged Australia East to feel like they were going to like lesser versions of PAX. Yeah. So they have committed to like, it's just PAX West now. Although they had a t-shirt that said PAX Prime on it, which I found funny. So I bought that. Doesn't fit, but I bought it. Eventually it'll fit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but PAX is great. Uh, I have gone this is my third or fourth time i think going pax west and i absolutely love pax west in all ways shapes and forms it just a seattle's a cool city it's pretty yeah. walkable they have pretty good public transportation to go do stuff even like i went a day and a half before the actual convention started i went and like it was really easy to go up to like Capitol Hill, just walk there. And they had Pink Gorilla, which is like a really well-known like retro game store, yeah. uh, which was great. Great place to visit. And they have a bunch of food, like really good food up there and cool stuff. And then like the next day I went up to like took a short lock, walk and then a monorail up to like the Museum of Pop Culture and the Space Needle and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So like when you're in the convention center area, it is really easy to just go visit a bunch of cool places. Great. Yeah. And oh, it's super just, walkable. It's it's great. Yeah. The opposite of PAX East. Got it. <laughs> yeah, Boston's not the greatest. <laughs> it's, for it's funny like yeah, and it's 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 funny because like I feel like Boston is kind of walkable if you're in Boston, but where the convention center is is like on a shitty little offshoot that like Oh, I didn't know that. I you okay. have you haven't been you haven't been to PAX East? I've been to Boston, but not to PAX East. Yeah, so so you know there's like there's like the main peninsula that's Boston. If you go one peninsula south, there's oh, a bunch that's of that's where it is? Yeah, that's where Ooh. the convention center is. And it... <laughs> It was surrounded by a bus stop, a bus station, and a bunch of fucking warehouses. And they have now changed it's like it where Orlando's a, convention center. Yeah, yeah. And and it's like a 15 minute walk from the convention center. They've now added a bunch of apartments and stores and everything, but it's still like a 15 minute walk across. You're not crossing a highway, but you're like walking on an overpass over a highway, and it's just like I mean, there's a bunch it's of that not good. even for, for Pax West. Like there's a bunch of highway around there, but like there's a ton of hotels. Listen, there's a ton of restaurants. Yeah. Like that's all super walkable. I get a hotel that's a couple blocks from the convention center. And that's perfect. The, I think it was the one last year, maybe two years ago. 
they opened up a second building for the convention center. So I guess over COVID, they built up a second building. So there's an arch building and a summit building. And like uh-huh. my hotel is just like triangulated between the two. So any given oh, morning, perfect. it's like super easy to walk to one or the other. And one has all of the tabletop stuff and then all of the like panels. Cool and the stuff. other one has all the video game expo stuff weirdos got it oh dude they're both rad in very different that's true ways. that's like true. the that's tabletop true. is incredible they have a bunch of game like people just companies bring games and try them with people there and like do play yeah. tests and like get people to try and buy them the panels are all super fun they've done a better job with the rooms i think uh recently too they because like the a couple years ago or last year when i went a lot of the rooms were more like horizontal which isn't mm-hmm. the best for panels. So like they kind of made a more, f- few more of them or like elongated Deeper. backwards. Gotcha. Uh, and those are a little better depending on what the panel is. Like it's kind of hard to see sometimes when you're horizontal. Um, so like those panels are great. Uh, once is like one of the giant bomb ones, which was fantastic. 10 out of 10 love blight club. Absolutely great. It is great watching Mike Minotti spill water on Dan Riker live. Uh, <laughs> within like three, it was like the second mini game they played. He absolutely yeah, doused him in water that. and was trying to like clean it up with his fake wig. It was ten on ten, absolutely great. Uh, and then they had like a whole concert one night with like a string quartet and then a group Ooh. called the One Ups that I didn't super like, but the string quartet, try for string quartet if they are ever in your area. They're really good. Highly recommend. Uh, nice. And apparently they play a ton of weddings. So if you want to pay for them, go to your wedding and play video game music really well in a string quartet. Hit them up. They're really That's good. An option. Highly recommend Got it. And they had like guests come in, like as they were playing songs, they did uh, like the star Wars outlaws song and had the composer come out and played on like wind instruments to go along mm-hmm. with the quartet. They had a drummer come out and they did like an undertale med- like boss medley. That was really good. Nice. Uh, just, absolutely great and that's just free you just go because it's there at pax in like the main theater um like i went to like the civ 7 deep dive panel for like an hour that was really cool they had a historian on their panel it was great i was so oh, i was nerding the awesome. hell out hell yeah they were talking about how for civ 7 it's a it's they're trying to build it out so like each civ has ages and they can change through the ages yeah. Because and like what spawned it was like the watching London evolve from like Roman times to modern and seeing the different stages. And they had like examples of maps of this area called like the Ludgate, I think, in London. Mm-hmm. And how it changed over hundreds of years because it was one of the only areas they found that had maps back from Roman times all the way to modern that showed the changes as it went. So it was like super cool. Oh, and that was so like their cool. inspiration for some of the stuff. I'm like, I was nerding the hell out in that panel. Uh but yeah, PAX is great. I played like 40 games. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Which one PAX? stuck out to you as, as something you want to keep playing and look forward to at release? Uh, there was quite a few. Um, uh, Zelda was there. Zelda was good. The new one coming out in like a few weeks. Oh, you. So, so I heard people playing it, but I didn't. I wasn't aware it was. Was it on the floor to play? Yes. So there was a wow. short demo on the floor and then a much longer one. Uh, closed door for for like people who were important yeah (laughs) i was not people who were important so i played the short one uh but it's fun the only thing i don't like is it uses the breath of the wild inventory system for your powers and uh the breath of the wild inventory system sucks yeah Uh, so yeah that's that's the downside but it is it was very cute it was very fun a good time uh on like the indie front because that was like the first game I played was the Zelda one um, on like the indie front. Really liked a rhythm RPG called Key Locker that comes out next week. I think we're going to try and play it on save data next week if we can get a key for it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like it had like rhythm RPG with like a little bit of Mega Man uh, oh. Battle Network vibes to it. Very cool. Highly recommend looking it up on Steam. Check out the trailers. Art styles rad. Plays really well. Um, so very much looking forward to that one. Oh, the year nerds, you'll like this. Uh, food truck empire. It is a food truck tycoon game. Mm. What's, where what's the? You, is like isometric, like game dev tycoon art style. Like what? What's the? 
it's a little mixed. Style-like. So there's like a map level where you're managing a bunch of different food trucks, where they go, Ooh. what they have like. So you can get multiple food trucks. You can manage where they go, what type of food they have. You can see what like demographics are in each area. So you can see like, oh, this place has a bunch of like blue collar workers. This place has a bunch of like white collar folks. There's Mm -hmm. kids over here. There's a bunch of nightlife over here. So like, you know, we're going to send the freaking taco truck over there at 2 a.m. to make a shitload of money. And then. In the individual food trucks, you can manage inside of them. You manage what they make and you actually position where stuff is in the food truck to optimize like, oh, I want to make sure the fridge is next to, yeah, you're like, I want to make sure the fridge is right next to the grill. So when they're making burgers, they can just pull the patty straight out of the fridge right on the grill. And then that's right next to the station where they put it together Mm -hmm. with like the buns and seasoning and lettuce and all that jazz. And you can do that for all the different food types that they have. Uh, it's really cool. I don't think it's coming out anytime super soon. Maybe early access or playtest, but uh, it was very cool. Uh, I'm going to play that one. That was really Sounds fun. awesome. Uh, let's see. What was one of the other ones? Um, there was a tactics game that I'm really hyped for called Krieg's Front, like Blitzkrieg, Krieg's Front mm-hmm. Tactics. Mm-hmm. It is XCOM meets armored core with a little bit of metal gear mixed in okay so you've got okay. mechs you've got turn-based combat kind of like xcom with like percent to hit percent to dodge but also your mechs have individual targetable parts and like if some get damaged like you might not have your rifle anymore and there's a just a bunch of cool tactical elements to it too of like they have cover that you can shoot with rockets to like expose people they have overwatch they have snipers they have like melee people with shields and they can use the shields to like dampen damage and block damage. If people are behind them, it's overall just very cool. The art style is like PS one, like late PS one, early PS two art style. And Uh they like committed to the PS one thing. They have the vertex jingling. Like they added that. Yes. Intentionally. And it just looks super rad. Uh, So, I'm super excited for this one. The only thing that was like a little iffy on was like the writing was very like kind of shitty military writing for the one mission that oh. I got to play. But like J6, it could gotcha. it could be better. Yeah, it could be better. Um, and that was also like only one, you know, data point. There's only one real section with writing, so it might get better. I have no idea. Uh, but that one was super rad. I played Echoes of Mistralia, which is the most Hades game that is not Hades. It's good. Uh, roguelike in the Hades style, but with their own original pantheon of like gods and gods mm-hmm. might be the wrong word, like guardians and people like didn't seem to have a strict, you know, we're doing Hades, but it's Egyptian gods. It was just like, no kind of their own thing. Um, had a, some original elements, but like it was really just felt like a Hades clone in a good way. Um, it, where you use just magic, there's no weapons, so like everything is powered by magic. You still have dashes. Uh, enemies were interesting, felt really good on the joysticks. Like, very surprised nice. at a team making a game that felt basically as good as Hades. Nice. Uh, that wasn't super giant with like a super giant budget that they have because they're indie, but only kind of. Oh. Uh, there are a bunch, dude. Uh, Tethergeist, if you like Celeste, Tethergeist is going to be up your alley. It's a 2D platformer, but instead of like having extra jumps, you can kind of throw a ghosty out and then teleport to it. Nice. And it's got like limited range, but there's some like map elements that the ghost can go through, but you can't. Beyond and then they souls. had, yeah, a little bit, a little bit of that, but. They they had some other extra stuff you could do for jumps, and it, it, it felt like Celeste, but it's a lot more like you have to think ahead because you have charges, mm-hmm. and sometimes they'll give you a selection of charges you can take to get through the level, and depending on which ones you pick, the order also matters. Like You have to use them in order. So depending on how you pick kind of your loadout for jumps and dashes and stuff changes how you solve the, the kind of jumping puzzle. Which felt really gotcha. interesting. That's cool. Um, so that was good. Tethergeist, highly recommend. 
Pioneers of Pagonia is an early access city builder sim game. I don't know how to explain this one quickly, but like you build up a city, your pioneers, you're like the world's broken. You're looking for other people of your kind. So you're like building up your city, trying to find others of your kind, merge, become friends, and then like build up your population. And they mm-hmm. simulate everything. So like, I don't, I don't describe it. You don't have to micromanage your people. Like they'll just they'll do just, it through simulation, but you can have like 3000 yeah. people in your towns and every individual person has a job and they wow. like automatically figure out what they should do unless you want them to do a specific thing. Yeah. Um, and they support like co-op in that you can have like a Ooh. number of people working in the same city. So yeah, like you're working on the same side, so stuff. you can basically just micromanage harder with multiple people if you want to do it that way. And that's it's smart. like totally optional whether you want to have like enemies and stuff. There there are enemies on the map that you can like make warriors and fight and stuff like that. But it's optional. So if you just want to have a chill time, you just want to make a city, you can. Yeah. Uh, but it's in early access. Still got a while to go from talking to them. I sound like a year or two before they're like, yeah, we're good on 1.0. But from what I saw, it looked rad. Uh, so keep keep an eye on that one. Uh, let me give you one more. Uh, what's one more? What's the other one I want to go on? Uh, well, real quick, what was that last one called? Oh, Pioneers of Pagonia. I don't- uh, oh, oh yeah, they they must deck. have shown that. This looks familiar. A, they must have been at it's a like, hard game, game awards to or something. Show quickly, yeah. Like luckily, like I went with like the save data media pass basically. So like uh-huh. one of their devs actually sat with me for like thirty minutes and showed me the game. Nice. And I was just like, oh, this is a good way to demo to press because if I sat here for thirty minutes, like I would have found two of these things. Like, because yeah. there's so much happening here. So, uh, it was a good way to do it. And the last one I'll talk about, there's literally, I played literally 40 games. <laughs> so, there's, <laughs> there's too many to talk about. But, um, I played another 2D platformer that was horror, which I'm not usually big on, but it's called Love <laughs> Eternal. And you started as like this girl, you walk down, see your family for like breakfast or something in the morning. And you go to answer like the phone, you come back, your family's gone. And then you're in this like shadow world that has like a bunch of platforming stuff. Um, Very simple art style and the platforming just felt really good. But this one, instead of having like, you know, a thing you jump to or a dash or anything, it's pretty much all gravity manipulation after you jump once. And like every time you touch the ground, it resets whether you can like uh, flip gravity some more. Um, and then there, you can sometimes hit these little power ups that let you do it again too. But it was just very cool 2D precision platformer with some like random horror elements that were were nifty. So uh, if that sounds interesting at all to you, uh, check that out. Love Eternal. Yeah, I'm looking at the the Steam page, it looks interesting. Yeah, the the art style was like not appealing to me at first, and then once I kind of played it for a little bit, got used to it, I was like, actually, this this, this is fine. This doesn't bug me at all. So, yeah, but there are a ton of ton of other games I played, but I think those are some of the some of the standouts for me. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool to hear. I feel like next year is finally the year that I'll go to PAX West. Been to PAX East two years in a row. Honestly, that's probably enough for to PAX West. East forever come to uh, west we can hang out yeah we did we did do pax unplugged in 2021 and that was cool the only problem was it was 2021 so it was mandatory masks inside yeah. and it's a board gaming convention so we really just wanted to sit there and play board games from the library <laughs> and that and we just could not do that for more than an hour or two at a time wearing a mask indoor nothing against masks but it's like it's hard oh, to hang I, out and play board games wearing i masks. wore a mask pretty much the whole time at pax uh gotcha, mainly because yeah. it's just there's so many people i'm like even if i don't get covid i'm gonna fucking get something yeah yeah that's fair <laughs> so that's fair it's just like, I <laughs> but, but i will say pax unplugged is in a great location too in philly because like there's like a big market next to it 
that is just full of all these little shops and, and food stores and everything. So we're definitely going to go back to PAX Unplugged at some point, but I think next year is definitely yeah, I think, I think PAX West. At least, at least Zach, maybe also Vic and Chris are going to go to PAX Unplugged this, this winter. So, Gotcha. Yeah, I, I, I know I'm not going to go this winter because the thing is, it's, it's right after Extra Life, and that takes about... <laughs> six months worth of energy out of me personally because i host it so so for that's me fair. that's very fair yeah yeah um last year i did blizzcon the weekend right before extra life so i get yeah. it man <laughs> man my my family was trying to do like a weekend getaway and i wanted to go but it was the weekend before extra life and i was just like i'm just gonna have too much shit to do <laughs> i have way too much shit to do um anyways uh jake what video games have you been playing? Uh, I'm just been playing more Star Trucker. How, how's it going? It's uh, it's interesting. It's um, I think I had only played about an hour or so uh, last yeah. week when we talked about it. So I really had just, you know, stepped my feet in. But now learning the systems, figuring <laughs> stuff out. Hey, um, come here, dude. Um, there's a lot more. If you'll allow me the pun, there's a lot more going on under the hood than uh -huh. uh, at first blush there's um like a skill tree that lets you unlock you know now you can do long haul stuff now you can do multi-trailer jobs now you can do fragile or or you know extra expensive yeah. um which i didn't realize at first i even i got like the prompt when i got my first level up it's like hey skill point and then I just like forgot about it for another six or seven levels. And then I was like, oh, wait, I've got points to spend. Let me do more of this. Um, I finally got into like the next uh, section of zones. You have to like um, the there's a couple of gates you can't go through because the systems beyond them have like electrical storms. And so you have to get like the proper like insulation for your truck before you can go out and do that. I finally got to those. And then I realized there's still a system in the truck that I'm locked out of, and it's the shutters for my windows. Yeah. And um, so I'm wondering if at some point there's going to be a section where I have to close the shutters and just rely on my external cameras. Because you've got dual mm -hmm. monitors yeah. that have like six or seven different external cameras you can switch to. And I've been using one of them. I, I set it to a camera that is on the bottom of the truck. Because I can't really see, like, oh, the hood is so big, I can't really see over the hood. Um, yeah, so realistic. I'm in, like, an area with a lot of debris. I like being able to see above and below the truck so that I know yeah. if I'm near stuff. Um, it's still super fun. I think I've played about seven hours now. Um, but um, I feel I, I'm really only maybe through, like, what seems like like 30% of the game. There's still like another half, like the back half of the map I haven't touched yet. Um, okay. So I'll get How back about to the, uh, the controls? Because last week you said you were, weren't were feeling comfortable with the controls yet. I still really want it to be VR. There's, like, there's just yeah. like a couple of moments in the loop where I'm like, this would be a lot easier if I could just swivel my head around. Because um, like when you use yeah. the jump gate the control to actually activate the gate is like on the ceiling of the interior of the cab. And the, the field of view is such that you always have to like tilt up to it yeah. and then tilt back down um, where I, yeah. I really just want to be like doing my thing and be like, and just have muscle memorize it to be able to do that. But um, we'll see if they ever add VR support, then I'll have to buy a VR headset. Yeah, I um, so I I wasn't gonna bring this game up because I played about an hour of it and I did not like it. I think it's mm -hmm. got problems, and one of the problems you talked about, which is like, it is it is a VR game. They may not act like it, but it is a VR game. It feels and, like it, and, and exactly why you say it's because you can't change your field of view. Your field of view is looking yeah. at the windshield, but they have multiple monitors below to the left to the to the bottom left bottom right they have monitors above you they have controls all around the windshield and so you are constantly having to look up at that specific control and then interact with it and that fucking sucks because when you're trying to do something and you're like i want to look straight ahead or i want to have this out of the corner of my eye but the field of view is not there so you have to deliberately look away from the windshield 
to find and interact or find a specific data point. And that it's it's so fucking stupid. It, it literally is like they built the game for VR and then they just went to 2D. That's what it feels like. Like it does not feel good in 2D. Um, I, I think a lot of like the, the truck did. management it could might have. not yeah. work super well in VR. Like the swapping it, like moving, getting out of the chair and swapping out your air and walking around the cab and your, yeah, yeah. your power cores and stuff. That might not work as well, but definitely the stuff when you're seated at the controls yeah. is like, oh man, I desperately want this to be in VR. Yeah. And I think the other big problem I have with the game is that driving the truck feels like shit. And the reason why it feels like shit is because have you guys ever played like Euro Truck Simulator or something, or even just in real life, you ever tried to back up with a trailer? <laughs> You know, and you have to like do the physics where you're like, okay, I turn left, so it turns right, and you have to do like a weird. It's hard to back up with the trailer. Okay, that's in two D, right? That's in two dimensions. Try doing that in three fucking dimensions, where now the trailer is going oh, up and right down and space. going sideways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And 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 like I'm fine with that in the game, but the problem is. This game should really give you six axes of control for your truck. And what I mean by that is like forward, backward, side to side, up, down, and then rotate along all three of those axes as well. And they can gimp it a little bit. They can be like, oh, you can only go super slow or hey, maybe one of these axes only works when you're at low speed or whatever. Um, but they don't do that. Like they only give you half of those. Yeah. So it feels it feels have, like you're driving. I desperately wanted like a, a strafe. Yes. Um, so yeah. Even make it like super like slow. But yeah. So so they're only giving some of those to you. So you'll like you'll go straight, and all of a sudden you realize, oh, I'm off, and I want, and I have like a, oh, I'll just fire this axis, and I go, oh, they didn't give that to me. So now I have to like combine two other axes of controls, and it's it fucking sucks because a couple months ago I played a VR game called Space Docker, and it's basically this: like you you control a little jump ship. And you go around connecting to cargo containers and then taking them to other parts of the map to deliver it. And they give you six axis of controls and it's in VR and you have all the screens and everything and you can see them out of the corner of your eye. It's basically the same fucking game. And I'm not accusing them of ripping it off in any way or anything like that. But they did VR and even outside of VR, they gave you full control of the ship. And it feels great because it feels challenging. Like all of a sudden you're spinning and you're like, oh, f I don't fucking know. Why am I moving sideways at an angle? And but then you have the controls to like try and rest it back. Right. Whereas in Star Trucker, it feels like you get in these situations where you're trying to back up a trailer and all of a sudden you're jackknifed in two fucking dimensions. And you're like, well, I can't really correct this because you don't give me the controls to correct it. So now I have to like fuck with your stupid controls to get it back. Like the, cha the challenge is with. The challenge is with how they've designed the game and not with the challenge of the gameplay that they provided you. And that's frustrated me about this. I do agree on all those points. And I did at some point realize like, I just don't, uh, except for like docking to stuff, I do not back up the truck. If I like overshoot yeah. something, I will just turn around. Turn all the way around, <laughs> yeah. But um, I do, uh, wait, what was I even going to say? Oh. I do think, yeah, like the driving, the controls, I want, I want that extra utility because there have been a couple of times where, um, I have accidentally backed up a little too fast and nudged the cargo container just a skosh. But then once it yeah. gets off that alignment, I'm yeah. like, oh, it's going to be a nightmare to try to Fucked. realign with this. Yep. Um, and then I had like a late delivery because it took me like two in-game hours to actually connect. Yeah. Wait for it to stop spinning and then yep. line up with it. Um, yeah. So but, just, um, just to, to pump up, again, I don't mean to shit on Space Trucker. I just feel like they have made some fundamental flaws with their game design. But to pump to pump up Space Docker a little bit, so that they have two things they do that solves that. And one is when you hook up to cargo, it's not a trailer. It's not on a hitch. So it's not going to swing separate from your vehicle. But it is still challenging because depending on how big it is or the weight of it, it changes your center of mass. So, so your ship all of a sudden feels drastically different and will rotate slightly differently because you're shoving thrusters on the end of a large heavy object instead of having the thrusters in the center of it like it is when you're not carrying any cargo. 
And the second thing they do is they give you these little thruster, these little rockets that you can shoot out. So if you have a spinning cargo, you can you can target it you can and shoot momentum. Yeah, it'll 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 sticky these little rocket jets to it that will that will stop it in space. It won't rotate it necessarily. It'll prevent it from rotating more, but it'll at least like stop it from spinning. And then you have to rotate your ship and get it lined up properly with it. So it's it's just one of these things where I'm like, Space Trucker, I expected it to be that game, but with a shitload of polish on top of it and some more gameplay mechanics. And what I actually got is something that's not as good as the relatively simplistic VR game that already exists. And that's oh. that's my frustration. Wait, I was did you did you at all play around with turning off the drive assist? Because I didn't realize until like three hours in that there's a drive assist that is on uh-huh. by default. Which if it's what if what seems to be is that it's like significantly helping like It'll just stop your momentum, right? It'll slow momentum instead of letting you go perpetually. Yes. So if I yeah. turned it off and I was realizing I'm like, oh, this is like now I have to do like a flip and burn situation to slow yeah. down. And I'm like, yes, yeah, I can't that's... fathom trying to do this with a trailer. No, like I didn't do much. it. I was like, I can't. I have to turn the drive assist back on because this is going to be a yeah. nightmare. So I, I kept it on because when I turned it off and realized that's what it was doing, I was like, you're not giving me enough control along yeah, all that six was exactly axes. It. I'm like, I don't have. I yeah. Need, I need Whereas. More. Like Space Docker has a shitload of assist and they literally start the game. They're like, hey, this is what all these assists do. We recommend you leave them off. Mm -hmm. It is going to be very challenging, but it's going to be much more satisfying. And it really is more satisfying. And and the way they do the the flip and burn is you don't have to flip to burn, but your reverse firing thrusters are much weaker. Yeah, you have RCS, but your your reverse firing thrusters are much weaker. So if you burn forward for 30 seconds, I mean for 10 seconds, you're going to have to burn reverse for 30 seconds to get mm. the same amount of deceleration. So like they've just accommodated it with like very smart gameplay designs. So it's one of those things where I'm like, you said, hey, if they add VR, you may have to get a VR headset. It, I mean, sure, why not? But if you're going to do that, play Space Talker. It's just, <laughs> it's just much better. I was looking at the Steam page for Space Talker and I'm like, oh yeah, this looks this yeah. looks really good. I, I can't make you any promises because it depends on how hardware setup goes for Extra Life. But uh, if it's feasible when you come down, we, you can you can try it out on my on my Quest 3 because it's you you would get kick up. that and VTOL VR. Ho- holy sh- honestly, between those two fucking games, those are the fucking VR bangers right there. Uh, anyways, you've been playing anything else this week, Jake? No, I'm, well, I mean, like, I've been playing more mini motorways and Mixalumia, but uh, I've uh-huh. talked about those ad infinitum at this point. Got it. Um, I'll, I'll hit my games real quick. So I, uh, took a trip this weekend, uh, a little three day jaunt, and that was a good opportunity for me to take my switch. So I finally got an opportunity to play Pepper Grinder. Have you guys heard about this indie game from oh, this year? Oh, yeah, I played Pepper Grinder. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It's basically just like a 2D platformer, side-scrolling platformer, but you have a drill, and there are soft areas of the level that you can drill oh, through. I have, yes, I have seen <laughs> And this. And it's, it's really cool, and I, I haven't played a whole lot of it. I've only played a couple hours, but you start to get, like, a gun You're most and a the grappling way through hook. You a couple hours. <laughs> It's, it's okay, short. Okay, that's yeah, good. it's a yeah. short one. But they start building on stuff and it feels really good. And um it, it also starts to feel like bro force in a little bit of a way where it's just like things start happening and they're a bit chaotic and and also a little bit of Celeste because some of the grappling hook stuff you're like having to like not time it perfectly, but you're having to like you're you're having to hit a lot of different buttons in quick succession yeah. through you a sequence. You have to like to calculate your momentum a bit with the grappling hook and yeah. in some cases too, yeah. And it's really cool. It's just a solid indie game. So if you're into, uh, you know, 2D side scrolling platformers or Celeste or Bro Force or anything like that, I would say even like Donkey Kong Country, uh, check it out. It's really cool. It was a fun one. It's short. Like, I think it was like four hours to play. And that's, like, that's good to hear. Do 90% of the game stuff. How many, how many worlds were there? Because I'm at like the end of I World 2. Don't remember. Okay. Don't remember. Um,. The other game I've been playing, I love mobile games when I'm flying because a lot of times I'm like, I don't feel like taking out my switch, you know, or I'm like just waiting at the gate and I'm like, I got my phone. Let me just let me let me listen to a podcast while I play like a little phone game. So I just hopped on. This was dumb of me, but somehow it worked out. 
because I, I swear to God, I've Googled hundreds of times, like best mobile games. Like every time I go on a trip, it's like best mobile games. And some of those are good. And I've seen those lists and a lot of them are repeats. So I just went to the Google Play Store and I was just like, oh, no. what do you got for games? And they had one called Pythagorea. And I started looking at it and it's uh, folks it right now. <laughs> it's a geometry puzzle game. It's fucking great. It is a very smart game. Like, like literally they, there's about 30 different chapters and each chapter is teaching you a concept. So for example, like isosceles triangles is one of the chapters. And then it's just a grid. It's probably like a, like an eight by eight grid. And the whole concept is that you can uh, place a point at the corner of grid lines and you can also draw between two of those points to draw things. So you'll get a prompt that's like, you know, hey, here's three dots. Connect them to make an isosceles triangle. And you're like, okay, so then you connect them. Then you have a little definition and it's like, hey, here's the definition of an isosceles triangle. And you're like, oh, cool. And then you go to the next level and they're like, here's two dots. You know, place the third dot and connect them to make an isosceles triangle. And you're like, cool, cool. Okay, all right, I got it. And then they're like, okay, here's the midpoint of one of the sides of the isosceles triangle <laughs> and the other vertex. And one of the other vertexes make the isosceles triangle. And so you're having to like, it does a really good job of like showing you the definition, but not necessarily teaching you the cheats. So kind of like if you're playing like, like pick cross or Sudoku, where you're having to come up with your own strategies, it feels really cool. And it's all geometry. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, um, I'm going to have to, I know this is related to that where the perpendicular to this is also parallel with that. So I'm going to have to construct. And then you get to a point where, like I said, you can only put a point on where the grid lines intersect but sometimes you're like i need a point in the middle of that square and so like one of the tricks you learn very early is if you just draw two diagonals through the square line where those lines cross is now a point that you can use so you're having to draw like construction lines just to make points in the middle of squares to then use that in the actual puzzle. It's so fucking cool. It feels I like a very a smart puzzler. Twice. I don't need this. It's need if you're this. if you're it literally sounds like you're doing geometry homework for fun. It's 100%. 100% you're doing geometry <laughs> homework. But it's so much better than that. So if, if you're into that at all, it's really and it's so fucking cool because and this is nothing against other games, but when I think about puzzle games, a lot of times you solve the puzzle and you're like, yeah, I solved that puzzle based on the rules of this very specific game, which does a very specific type of puzzle. And it feels good, right? But then in this, when you solve the puzzle, you're like, fuck yeah, I learned how to do the tangent of an isosceles triangle that shares a side with a trapezoid. Like you're learning shit and you figured it out. I fuck it. I feel like Pythagoras because you're like having to come up with your own little theorems to That's prove it out in geometry. It's fucking great. Anyways, <laughs> shout outs to that game. It's it's free. There's no fucking ads in it. Actually, I don't know if it's free or not. I may have paid a dollar for it, but there's like there was nothing annoying or disturbing about it. And I was fucking great. Um, last game here. I just want to do a quick shout out to Armor Reforger. We've been talking about it for a bit. Will and I have been playing it, but we're going to start streaming it. We had a stream on Tuesday. Um, have it a lot of fun. We're jumping into multiplayer servers. We're going to let anybody who wants to join. Um, community members friends of the site so if anybody's interested in playing armor reforger you know join our discord and check it out we had some fun moments this past weekend um or this past stream T two ones there was a clip i posted where will and i were kind of striking out on our own and we we run down a hill we come to a road and i look to my left of the road and i look to my right and there's a fucking full like 15 squad al-qaeda like 100 meters away in the road like crossing the road at the same time we are and we're just like shit street we get down and just like lay them out and it was fucking crazy um and then there was another instance where we just we met up with some randoms and there was like we just sporadically formed a convoy so there was like 12 of us in the back of a truck and then i think two other humvees and for whatever reason, the guy leading this convoy was like, all right, we're going to drive through the middle of Fallujah all the way to the bottom of the map. And so we're fucking cooking it through Fallujah. 
and they're just like and i'm sitting there in the back of this like supply truck right so i can't really see much and they're just like oh there they are boys don't slow down don't slow down and i like look to my side and we're like blowing past al-qaeda just like chilling in alleyways and they're like firing shots at us and then because the truck controls are a little weird the truck driver kept like accidentally crashing around corners so he'd crash and we'd stop and the humvee would slam into the back of us and we'd start taking fire and it would be like what the fuck are we doing what the fuck are we doing we'd be like get, get out get out get out we'd get out and like pull security they'd get the truck out and they'd be like get the fuck out of the truck get the fuck out of the truck you know and it was just great random moments in armory forger so if you're interested at all check out our streams join our discord we're gonna start streaming every tuesday and uh letting anybody who wants join it's a lot of fun uh david what have you been playing this week Astrobot. The answer is Astrobot. Astrobot. It's really good, y'all. <laughs> like, it's really good. Uh, hey, do you like 3D Mario games? Yeah. This is another 3D Mario game that's not made by Nintendo. Like, just hands down. That's that's yeah. what it is. Uh, it's really good. Even the little like gimmick the gimmicks that they have are all enjoyable. And like the the clo- I I think it's closest to probably Galaxy in terms of like how they use gimmicks based on like what galaxy or planet or whatever you're on. They'll give you some. And where in Mario Galaxy there are gimmicks I don't like, specifically Spring Mario. Eat my butt, Nintendo uh-huh. on Spring Mario. That was not fun. Eat his butt. Eat his butt, Nintendo. The whole thing. Uh, I have yet to find any in Astrobot that I don't enjoy. Um, wow. or at least that don't overstay their welcome. And I am in the well, last, I'm assuming there's going to be one that unlocks when I do the last one, but I'm on like the fifth of five, unless like a mystery galaxy appears at the end. How uh, many bots do you, are you at right now? I want to say like between 200 and 250, somewhere in there. Okay. I think there's 300 total. Okay. Yeah, there's 300 total. Yeah. Uh, but I got most of them. I have a hundred percent in all of the worlds up to the current one. So wow, I'm 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 cooking. It's great. I love I. I feel like there's not a whole lot I can add to the Astrobot conversation, so I won't. But like yeah. it is every bit as good as people say it is. Game game freaking rips, dude. Uh, it's yeah. great. I'm I played looking about forward to it. Twenty five minutes of it because my Costco order. So Friday. I was like, I'm going to get Astrobot, but I know I'm going to be away this whole weekend for like three days a weekend. So I was like, I don't need it right away. And then Costco's like, hey, do you want Astrobot and the Astrobot controller for 20 bucks off? And I was like, I do need another controller. So I ordered it and they're like, okay, we'll ship it to you. And I'm like, cool. It'll be here on Tuesday when I get home. Uh, folks, it got delivered about three hours ago on Thursday, <laughs> so I had <laughs> I had enough time to install it and play one level, and I was like, cool. And then I've charged the controller, so I haven't even played with the controller yet. Um, it's, real good. it's real good, but, but yeah, it's 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 it it's it feels exactly like Astra's Playroom so far, and that's fantastic. It's just more of that, which is awesome. Yeah, like literally, my only complaint is it uses the Dual Sense so much that it's kind of loud like I the controller is loud down <laughs> yeah the yeah. controller it's i don't even i don't mean the volume coming out of the controller i mean the rumble at like times yeah. it's kind of loud has, has the has the rumble always been like that loud on the, i feel like astro is just sense? using it more than more. everyone else does yeah because the thing is when it comes to the ps5 controller i don't use it period because i play that console about once every six months so i couldn't tell if the game was being loud if the controller was being loud if my controller was broken i I feel like it just uses the controller functions more more than other games and like it like every feels great yeah every different type of ground you walk on feels different on the controller makes different sounds coming out of the controller it's the attention to detail in the astro astro's playroom and just astro bought this one is like insane the crossovers yeah. are like giving me all of the 90s and later nostalgia for these games i played uh and there's i'm a huge nerd we're on a video game podcast there's characters that show up i'm like, i don't know who the fuck this is <laughs> yeah I'm yep like, there was one where it's a cat and i'm like who the fuck is this cat <laughs> it's the cat from final fantasy 7 remake the it's one that shows that up cat. at the end 
Oh. I know that cat. It's not that cat. <laughs> uh, and there, there's some that uh, like. Is, is, I sorry, I'm just starting thinking. Is it the gravity? Isn't there a cat in Gravity Rush? Doesn't she have like a cat? Uh, the main character is her name is Cat. She is not a cat. There is also a cat. It's like a cat. There, there is also a cat. It's not that gotcha. cat. It's like a PS1 or PS2 yeah. cat, like based yeah. on the polygons. But like, I have no idea who it is. There's a I, bunch of I like heard. I don't want to spoil other ones, but like it's so cool the way they do yeah. like the, the end of every galaxy has just a super freaking cool level. Every single one, they're just completely different from everything you everything else you play. Nice. And they're rad. This game rules. I'm gonna platinum and 100 percent complete this game. Uh, and oh, yeah. I hope they release the speedrun stuff later because I think that would be fun too for a few of these levels uh, to yeah. to play those. So I mean, I'm excited uh, to dive into it. Not a whole lot else to add. If you've heard people say Astrobot's rad, it's rad. That's just it. Yeah. Uh, other one I played, actually played both of these during packs. Uh, played Animal Well to not completion, but beat it. Uh, Animal Well's rad, y'all. Uh, didn't think it's worth it's worth the hype. Yeah, it's 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 pretty fucking good. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> it's it's basically think a Metroidvania that is removes combat and it's entirely puzzles, but the puzzles can kill you. And that's kind okay. of how the game feels. Um, like there's enemies you can't like fight them. But there are enemies and they can kill you and Got getting it. around them or like defeating them is a puzzle. It's not like you're just a little dude, like you're literally a little slime. You're a little guy. Uh, and there are things you can do to make things go away or get them to run away. But like you're never just like straight up. Eh, maybe not. Never. You're generally not straight up killing. stuff. Uh, so it's it feels like a puzzle game, like a puzzle Metroidvania. Um, and they do the, the game's also like 30 megabytes and it looks beautiful. And I have literally no idea wow. how they did that, especially once you see some of the like really cool, um, like mist effects that they have in this 2d space does not feel like this game should be 30 megabytes, but it was a great game to download on shitty hotel Wi-Fi because I forgot to download it before packs. So it was great. <laughs> it only took a few minutes. Like and this the, or one photo from my iPhone. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but it is it's really good. Um there's like two sections where things chase you a lot, and I famously hate that in video games. Uh, but other than those two sections, game game rolls. Really, really enjoyed it. Awesome. Um and the other one was a thousand times or a thousand X resist. Does which this is one heard good things live about up. it. Yeah, does this live up to the hype? I'm not far enough yet in this one. I didn't get to play it as much. Uh, like I played it for a while, and then like sister came to visit, so I didn't get to play it more. And then Astrobot came out, and I went to play Astrobot. Um, but it's one I'll come back to. It's pretty light on the gameplay, heavy on narrative, and I like where it's going so far. Um, you, this isn't like a spoiler. It's literally told to you at the very beginning of the game. Hi, Raz. Uh, you are in this like maybe future quote unquote future society where like all of your group are clones of someone who's like uh -huh. called like the all mother and you're all like sisters and you like everyone's name is their role in the society. And at some point okay. people get basically called to the front to go fight people that is not super clear at the at the beginning like what's what's happening and the rest is as far as i've gotten just kind of mystery narrative nothing challenging just kind of walking through the world interacting with people interacting with stuff uh interacting with different mechanics that change the world to kind of just figure out what's going on like what's going on around you um really cool art style like, I think it's really good for like a Steam Deck. I don't know if it's on Switch or not. Um, there's a there's a warning on Steam Deck that it's only playable instead of verified because the text is pretty small, which is kind of accurate. The text is pretty small. So like 
if you don't have good eyesight, you might not like this, but I have good eyesight, so I'm down to play this on the Steam Deck, and it was <laughs> fine. Um, but it's also pretty well voiced, especially for an indie game. I didn't expect the voice acting to be as good as it is. Um, and genuinely, I'm, I'm not super duper far, but I'm very interested in what the fuck is happening in this world and uh, where it's going. So not super far, but the very beginning like captured me really strongly. So I will definitely, after I finish Asher about, I'm going to go back to this and play through it. Nice. That's my grass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's hop into the news. Um, guys, Flappy Bird is coming back. Eh. Eh, yeah. but also like, this is one of the most surprising things that could well, happen. Well, it was. I, it looks like whatever this new company is, they kind of snatched the rights to the property away from the original creator. Oh, yeah. Wow. So the way the way I understand it was the original creator let the trademark lapse. Another oh. company came along, grabbed it, and then turned around and sold it to this company, which is now said they're making a game, mobile game. They're going to add gotcha elements and all sorts oh. of stuff to it. Well, I went from not caring about this to actively hating it real quick. <laughs> I, um, I, I was never a big Flappy Bird fan. Look, hey, it's a cool little flash game. Fun five minutes. Yep, that's it. I'm done. Uh, well, the, the thing about Flappy Bird that I liked was like the creator made so much money in such a short time that he was like, no, this was like a joke. Don't. Yeah. I'm taking this down. Like this is too stressful. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah, this just feels like an IP zombie. I don't, I don't really give two fucks about it. I, it should not be getting this much attention, honestly. So whatever. Um, moving on. Uh, we've got some labor news. Uh, we've got two layoffs, one at Microsoft where they laid off about 3% of their global workforce, specifically 100, 650 employees, uh, mostly in the games division. We've got Embracer Studio Lost Boys has made another round of layoffs, an unspecified amount there. And then a little bit of a reverse layoff, the entire Annapurna Interactive team resigned recently in protest to stalled negotiations with Annapurna Mothership over spinning out Annapurna Interactive. This last story is the wildest one, right? Have you guys looked into this? I mean, I saw it maybe half an hour before we hopped on this call, so I have not that's, done... That's when it broke, yeah. 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 I, I, I looked a little bit into it, and like... The... Uh, First of all, Annapurna Interactive was only like 25 people, which was like shockingly small to me. Yeah. Uh, but literally all of them agreeing to quit together is insane. <laughs> like, that's yeah. insane. Yeah. It feels like it, it feels like I'm going to read into this. Some of this is fact. Some of this is me heavily reading into it. But there was ongoing negotiations for Annapurna Interactive to be spun off into its own company away from Annapurna. Me reading into it, the fact that everybody wanted that to happen tells me there were probably some very conflicting personalities, business ideas, just different mentalities between Annapurna and Annapurna Interactive. And that's why they wanted so aggressively to be spun off on their own. When those negotiations stalled and were cut off, that's when the Annapurna Interactive team felt like they were, I don't want to say forced to resign, but they had to initiate their last resort, which was to just full-blown all resign rather than continue to work under Annapurna, which is wild. Those conditions must have been pretty bad. Yeah, I'm I'm curious how much of it was was like a ideals thing too, because like the recently Annapurna made a deal with Remedy to publish I don't know if entirely or that's the film actually I thought it well, was about here's the thing it was a multimedia deal. In that I believe they were helping to fund Control 2 and possibly yes. publish oh, Control wait. 2. You're right. But no, I know I think they would think also I... be the ones who got the film rights to Control and Control 2 to bring TV or movies uh, for that to life. So I'm going to check this real quick because I, I don't believe they got publishing rights because Remedy was saying we'll be able to self-publish with this. So Annapurna uh, was getting the rights, the IP rights for other mediums. Um, oh, so maybe it was like just funding is, investment type thing yeah, instead of publishing Anna, rights. 
Yeah, so Annapurna Interactive didn't have anything to do with it. I'm just double checking their press release. Remedy yeah, moved towards self-publishing. Could... So yeah, Remedy oh, okay. Remedy's going to self-publish. So so oh. it is weird, but they made a deal with Annapurna. Annapurna Interactive is nothing to do with oh, okay. it, even though that's their video game publisher. Yeah, like I yeah. saw a press release that was like, the Control 2 deal is like not affected or whatever, because that was with Annapurna based, not interactive, but I didn't know the, the details. So yeah. Yeah, that whole and thing's just that it's super weird. What happens to I, I just went this I went to their publisher page on Steam and there's like ten games in the upcoming releases section. Yeah. Uh sounds like no one knows, uh frankly. Yeah. Uh, from from no, nobody's think, uh, nobody's answering the Jason phones. Schreier story, right? Yeah, it was I don't know if he's the one that yeah. I don't know if he's the one that broke it. That's the only thing. I, I know he was at least reporting on it. I don't know if he broke it, but yeah. from the sounds sound of it from his story was that all of the partners partner indie game studios are all like flailing to try and find contact people for what they continue doing. I don't know how if any of those were coming out soon. But my oh, heart super tough. goes out to any of those that are coming out like in the next couple months, because no matter even even if Annapurna is able to hire people, which sort of good luck if everyone literally quit at the same time, that does not bode yeah. well for you hiring new people. But even if they somehow did or contracted out, like turning around all of that knowledge and relationship buildup and yeah, whatever well. stuff they had worked on for the next few months is gonna suck in. for any of the indie studios involved yeah absolutely so tough situation but i i can't help but feel like this is a win for labor this is one of those situations where i, I don't know this is what happened but you have plenty of situations where the company says what are they gonna do all quit we can treat them like shit and i guess did. what they all fucking quit <laughs> like I, i've quit, been involved they quit into a yeah. bad market like yeah that took some some guts to quit into the current state that the video yeah. game industry is in. I, I do think they had two executives that went with them. Yep. So I'm starting to think if they're smart, they would probably just band together, get some outside funding and just spin up their own fucking problems. Publisher. Getting outside funding right now. But yeah, I'm with you. I, I yeah. hope you gotta get I hope they do that. I hope they cash. spin up their own thing. Yeah. Get some fracking money. Yeah. Yeah, head up uh, to Pennsylvania. Kamala Kamala says she wasn't going to get rid of the fracking there, so you're probably fine. Drill, baby, drill. Uh, folks, are you guys excited for the PS5 Pro? Not it's even. It's real. Bit. No, it's here. Disclaimer: I'm a technically a Microsoft employee, I but like, no. <laughs> I like we talked about how we didn't really see the need for this, and we this generation is weak and it's hard for us to justify buying the base machine when let alone buying a newer version and then they just decided to come out and announce a 700 dollars digital horizontal only machine <laughs> that uh does have some improvements on it but is 200 dollars more two two to three hundred dollars more than the current ps5 offering uh, yeah, my PS4 I, I, right I'm now wow. is now that I'm no longer playing Destiny because Destiny's done. Um, it's just a Blu-ray player, so I'm not going to buy yeah. the PS5 to then not be able to play Blu-rays on it. Like, yeah, I mean, you can play Blu-rays on it, not the Pro, it's not the Pro. You get the additional. <laughs> oh, that's stuff. right, it doesn't come with the disc drive. That's it's, right. I, yeah, I believe. I believe if you want the disc drive and you want it to $80. stand up on its own. It's the disc drive alone is eighty dollars. Yeah, it's eighty dollars, and the stand is thirty dollars. So it's eight hundred and ten dollars if you want I, a full console, basically. I don't agree with, but understand not including the disc drive. Like, yeah, I don't agree with it. I understand. For this, Sony, though, it seems weird because they manufacture Blu-rays. That's I just I, do, but they don't I get can't that. Justify. Like, I don't think the Blu-ray market's that big. Like Best yeah. Buy stopped carrying I mean, them in most of their stores. Yeah. I just I can't justify discless and seven hundred dollars. If it was six hundred discless, I'd be like, "Yep, there's the trade off. Makes sense to me." But they what are charging it? a disc price for it, Even which is like, crazy. It's a premium product, and they're like, "Oh, it's thirty bucks for the stand." Like, 
Just put the stand in. It's seven hundred <laughs> fucking dollars. Who the fuck do you think you are? Wheels. Yeah, it's like exactly. It's like who do you think you are? Apple? You're not Apple. Yeah, you can't get away with that shit. You're not Apple. And like, I I actually I legitimately love. I have bought a Xbox Series X and a PS5 this generation. I love them both. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't see the PS5 Pro making that big of a difference. This feels oh. like. I bet they're not manufacturing a ton of these. And this is targeted to a very specific. I want my games to look my PS5 exclusive games that I buy at launch and don't wait for the PC version to come out in their best possible quality audience. Like, I feel like that's who it's targeted to. They're probably not going to make manufacture a lot of these because they know they know people aren't going to spend so much. I don't know because the thing is they uh, okay I'm pulling these numbers out of my ass because I'm too lazy to look them up live I believe they sold at least a million PSVR 2 headsets and I believe they have sold at least 2 million PlayStation portals and both of those are overpriced hardware that kind of delivers on what it does it's $200 for a streaming only device (laughs) that's it yeah but I mean it's like $80 just for the controller so like that wasn't a huge eh, shock yeah me. but and like i mean to be fair i the, i am someone who runs chiaki on deck and has a portal the about, haptics in the say, portal do kind of make a difference yeah but you can get a steam deck for 300 350 right yeah, and it has yeah. all of that plus more so it's like so my point is just they have made these compromised overpriced hardware before and people are fucking buying them so i don't think it's going to be hit but I don't think this that's, is necessarily bad. That's what I mean. Like, I, I think, I think okay. they know that they're not going to sell a metric ton of these. Because I think the PS4 Pro sold pretty well. Yes. And the PS4 Pro, when they launched it, they also launched PS4 Slim at the same time. And they were only a $100 difference. Yeah. And it was much cheaper. It was like, I think 400 bucks for the Pro might be wrong. But like, that was much better. The uh, I feel like people's willingness to buy things at that time was also probably in a better place than ps5 pro for this year i feel like people are stretched thin more than when the ps4 pro came out released and was cheap enough at that at the time i bought one for my brother and felt like i wasn't taking a big financial hit yeah 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 but i'm not buying him a ps5 pro yeah i mean i didn't have a ps4 until the slim came out then i bought it then so like but that, I, did, that I chose also, not to buy the Pro, even though it was hundred dollars more, because yeah. I didn't have money at the time. But, like. <laughs> but but the other thing is the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X, they made sense because that gen was underpowered from the start. Yes. Like if you remember, they weren't they doing were 4K, struggling. they were doing 1080p, and they were struggling to hit 30 FPS. They were hitting 20 to 25 on a lot of games. Oh, and so when when the PS4 Pro comes out and they're like, hey, we can do checkerboard 4K or 60 1080. And the One X comes out, and it's like we can do true 4K or 60 1080. It was like, oh shit, yeah, that actually does make sense. This this feels like I said this in the Discord we, when we were discussing it. I kind of wandered into this, but I feel like it's true. When they Xbox Series X and and the PS5, the whole marketing push was 4K ray tracing, 60 FPS, and. Oh, it personally, is very... I thought the big push was SSD for both of them. I didn't yeah, think yeah, those that, were the that pushes. Part as well. I thought it was SSD for load times. But in, in terms of graphics, it was it was yeah. they were trying to they were advertising all three of those pillars. But it is very <laughs> rare to find a game that hits all three. And for them to have to come and out, don't forget and basically the PS5 say, box, vanilla PS5 yeah. has 8K on it. Don't yeah, forget that. Yeah. <laughs> so for them, so for them to basically have a 10 minute presentation for the PS5 Pro where they say, hey, remember those three things we talked about? 4K, 60 it, yeah. FPS ray tracing. We actually you need to spend seven hundred dollars to get all three of those reliably in well, games that came out on the PS fucking four because half their presentation was cross gen games or port games that have been ported from the PS4 yeah. and are not even weren't even at, on PS5 at launch because they're that old. Like they, it, it's wild. You know, make it worse for you. Yeah, I believe it was in the blog or press release that 4K 30 is actually fine <laughs> and may have the PS4 Pro and or PS5 Pro enhanced 
labeling on it if it's 30 jesus and 4K. if it's if it's 4k 30 jesus christ if it See, wasn't that's... 4k 30 previously like i don't think they can oh. just keep the same thing and put it on there but if it's like previously See, didn't hit 4k 30 and does now they can put the sticker on or something like that it's so dumb because for them to really make their argument i could at least understand if they're like hey ps5 pro enhanced means at least 4k 60 maybe not ray tracing but we can guarantee 4k 60 yeah. And that's the cert they have to hit, but they're not know. doing I, that. So I feel like the next true generation of these half steps is the generation where at the current fidelity, we hit 4K 60 pretty regularly. Yeah. And that's the benchmark because going higher fidelity than we have now is as everyone's fucking around and finding out too Doesn't expensive matter. and not like scale yeah. enough to do. So and, and, like, and I feel like the next tracing, gen is, is where it caps yeah. for a while. Yeah. And ray, ray tracing... It, ray tracing is not something you turn it on and it magically looks good. It needs a lot of aesthetic support behind it as well. And a lot of you games are to, not you doing need that. You to make level and art yeah. design decisions to, to make ray tracing remedy. look good. Yeah. You need to be level designing for <laughs> remedy games. <laughs> yeah. You need to, your character needs to have a flashlight in a dark room. And then mm -hmm. it's like, oh, now I see what's going on. Yeah. Best so looking it's concrete you've ever seen, the best looking carpets yeah. you've ever I seen. I mean, like, even the HDR, and this is for both systems, like, oh, HDR on both still is not a perfect no. thing. Like, sometimes with certain games, it doesn't look good. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, Cyberpunk at launch had HDR and it, it was not HDR. Yeah. They just had some shitty LUT they put on it um so yeah it's just wild to see this i i will say this though i i bought a one x i did not buy a one x at launch i had an xbox one and i remember trying to play like arkham knight on it and it was like 20 fps and i was like oh this console's not good right like it just does not run well i remember um, the ps4 talk about the part of the reason i didn't buy a ps4 until the slim came out that was a little more efficient was like I remember talking to both friends and hearing on like podcasts and stuff of people talking about like, oh yeah, I was playing this recent release on my PS4. Shit sounded like a jet engine. Like it was just going oh, yeah. all the time the and I had to turn my TV up because the fan was going so loud. Yeah. So, so it, it's just not a thing. With yeah. The gen. Yeah. I did end up buying a one X and I'll tell you the thing that pushed me over the edge with the one X. It was a one, two punch that happened in concert with each other that made me i was at work when i saw it and i immediately as soon as i left work i went and got a one x and what it was was red dead redemption 2 came out and all the consoles were either 1080 30 fps or ps4 pro was doing like 1440 and 30 fps the only console that could do 40 4k 30 fps was the one x and the other thing was gamestop had a trade-in deal where you could trade in your xbox one and instead of paying 500 dollars for a series x i mean a one x you paid like i think it was 300 and you got a copy of red dead redemption 2. <laughs> like it was a crazy trade-in yeah. deal and and that's why i say i have no plans to buy a ps5 pro but here's the problem if you do a trade-in deal like that yeah <laughs> if they do a trade-in deal well apparently apparently ps5s you can get 350 right now at gamestop for it so yeah, but but it's missing the other half, right? Which is I don't play my PS5, so I need a game that I'm actually going to put dozens and dozens of hours into that will have a graphical benefit. So if, six. It, it's GTA Six. I know I'm gonna I'm I know I'm gonna play the shit out of GTA GTA Six, and if they come out and say, look, it's 30 FPS on everything, but it's 60 FPS on PS5 Pro, I'm tempted. Like that's that's what they're missing here. Is the price is too high? So they need to supplement it some way and a trade-in may do that and they don't have a fucking killer game for it. They just don't. They don't have anything that says, hey, if you want to play this the best way possible, that is way better than anything else on the consoles, gameplay and like how well it runs, you have to do PS5 Pro. And all they've shown so far is like, hey, if you want to play Last of Us Part 2, a PS4 game at 60 FPS, uh, yeah, sure. No, it's Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. Oh, sorry. Sorry, the remaster of the port. Sorry. Sorry. So, yeah, this is not going to hurt them. Everybody saw this coming. It's, it's. It was more know, expensive. Man. I thought they were going to do 600 and 700 is like a lot. Yeah. I, this is not me bragging. There's zero proof of this, but I was, I was listening to 
Giant Bomb while I was driving on Monday. And Giant Bomb was like, this announcement's coming. What do you guys think it is? And they were saying things. And I said to myself, I said to myself, knowing Sony, it's probably 700 and I bet it's fucking discless. And, and it was because I was like, that is just ballsy enough. That's just ballsy enough where they know they can get away with it. They don't need to make you happy. They don't need to satisfy you. They just need to do just enough to get people to buy it. And them coming down to 700 and taking the disc off is their, is their medium, you know? So it, it sucks to have a hardware announcement that you don't get excited about it in any way. Like this is a major fucking console announcement and meh. Anyways, uh, switch to that's the next one to look forward to. Well, folks, I was going to do it for today's show. Upgrade anything even a little bit, and I'll probably go switch to the old one. Is <laughs> yeah, such, that's true. Such that's old true. hardware. <laughs> um, but folks, I do have a little bit of content call out. Are you guys familiar with uh, People Make Games, the YouTube yes. channel that and does? Oh, they do great stuff. stuff. You, talk about. They do great docs. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Jake, you've you've watched this video, the games behind your government's next war. Mm-hmm. Well, what did you think about it? Um, really fascinating. You know how PM- it was like right at the beginning, I was totally on the like, oh yeah, this is probably really bad. And then it does do this kind of roller coaster of like, wait, maybe, maybe it's good. Yeah. But it's also still kind of bad. I don't know how to feel about this, but it was really in depth and nuanced and thoughtful. Um, it's good. It's a good video. Yeah. It's basically uh, a little more than an hour. It's uh, Quinn who uh, previously from uh, Shut Up and Sit Down, a board gaming channel who's now with People Make Games. Basically, uh, the way he puts it was they started out trying to make a documentary about the war gaming industry, the modern war gaming industry, but they quickly hit like a moral and ethical problem, which is they showed up to the conference and everybody there recognized him because <laughs> they're like, oh, we love you. We love board games. We love your video. And he's like, oh, shit, I'm part of this story now. And then the other thing was, For him and his team, they could not reach some sort of like ethical or moral clear standing where they're like, we're going to present it like this or we're going to take this stance. They're like, this is fucking complicated. So so he makes a good description of like we started as a documentary, but instead it's just going to be a video essay where we just talk through our feelings and show you the interviews and things. And it ends up being very good where he just talks about. The history of war gaming, how that's led to tabletop games and video games, and how they go back and forth. Video games influence war games. War games influence video games. Uh, a very good example he gives is um, the original designer of uh, Twilight Struggle and a lot of asymmetric uh, game board games like that that are very famous. Has inspired games like uh, Root which is a board game, which has now become a popular video game and a popular, ta- popular tabletop game, which is kind of a, uh, I don't mean this derogatory way, but like a, a, a kitty fied version of asymmetric warfare, asymmetric gameplay, where not everybody's playing by the same rules or interacting with the same systems. And then he talks about, well, it was recently discovered that that person started out as a CIA analyst making war games for them and kind of took that experience into making Twilight Struggle. And it's just like he's drawing through lines from like government work to the board game to the video game, then back to a board game, then back to a war game. So it's it's a really good deep dive into that relationship and the moral quandary there and how as video gamers, we are intrinsically tied with war gamers and how that's funded by the defense industry and how some of those games could (laughs) could lead to people dying and how some of the games we play like for example arma arma has a private version that is used by the military for for infantry training and it's just a big fucking nest of of conundrums there so definitely check it out the games behind your government's next war on youtube it's like a little from people make games an hour 12 yeah yeah it's great it's in depth and it's good all right, folks. Uh, oh, wait. Slightly off topic, but I feel like you'll appreciate yeah. this again. One of the panels I went to at PAX was like kind of just a, a fun game show host giving a bunch of like questions to the to the panel. And so many of the questions were related to Arma 2 and the mods that have come from Arma 2 because like, you know, like <laughs> PUBG, Daisy, all of that stuff yeah. all came from Arma 2. And like, a quarter of the questions, it was kind of a joke partway through, were like, this mod of a mod of a mod of Arma 2 <laughs> ended up 
becoming a really popular game series. It was, it was just very enjoyable. I had a good time with it. Yeah, it's like like one of the um one of the stories I cut from this week was uh, Gary's mod, according to Guinness World Records, has officially become the best selling PC exclusive ever, and that's that's it was it was free for a while. It was cheap, skibbity, a, a ter- <sighs> uh, trouble in terrorist town, uh, jailbreak. All sorts of shit has come from Gary's Mod servers and uh, Gary's Mod mods. Uh, anyways, folks, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, let me hit this outro button. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We're Subpixel. David, where can people find you? You can find me over at Save Data, Save Data Team on YouTube, Twitter, all the things. Awesome. Uh, Jake, we can find you at underscore Jake Terrio on twitter you can find me corners of your home yes at think gibson on twitter and you can also find us at subpixel team or subpixelfilms.com all sorts of good stuff check it out nailed it i didn't hit the button yet because i wanted you guys to know that i nailed it